like I'm, I'm not originally from Buffalo, New York. I'm originally from Russia and I moved to Buffalo in 2010. Wow. So that's been over 11 years ago. So Buffalo is home now. And um, the first thing that stood out to me about the people in this area is how passionate they were about the city and the community and just, you know, building it up and improving the the world around them. So and it was such a contagious energy that got me also, you know, sucked in and, uh, you know, got me excited about getting involved with the startup and technology scene here in the area. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. Welcome everyone to Rochester Business Connections. I'm here with Lena Levine. How are we doing today? Great, great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I am too. You you are the CEO of Four Coda. Um, mm-hmm. You're an expert on UX and UI design, and I'm excited to talk to you because at the end of the day, I, I do marketing, I design websites, I do basic SEO, but your technical knowledge and your advanced knowledge of ultimately the similar kind of systems is beyond my understanding. So I know I personally have a lot to learn. And large companies like the University of Buffalo use you for that, you know, advanced technology knowledge. So let's start there. What exactly is UX, UI design? Like, what do the acronyms stand for? What does that mean? Yeah, great question, right? Uh, right to the point. I love it. <laughs> so UX, UI uh, stands for user experience and um, uh, user interface. So, and it's the um, part of the design field that deals with um, crafting uh, the, 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 the user experience online. So when you, you know, open a website on your computer, on the mobile phone, so think of it as a, how easy or difficult to use something when you navigate online so that user experience kind of guides how users navigate from one screen to another and uh, the goal of user experience designers is to make that process as smooth as possible and uh, um, user interface design is how pretty everything looks right so you know flashy buttons pretty images all that kind of stuff. And those UX and UI usually go hand in hand together. So, and sometimes you see people use them interchangeably in the conversations, but uh, uh, really creating those smooth um, user experiences or, you know, online experiences for the people to make sure that if you sell it online, they can purchase it easily. If you're trying to get people to sign up for your newsletter, they can easily find that sign up form and click sign up. And uh, so that's the, 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 the primary, primary goal of the UX UI design field. Yeah, and nothing's been more important these days than a good user experience. Um, so, so are you developing, and maybe not at the scale, but apps like things like TikTok and, you know, <laughs> I mentioned TikTok specifically because it's probably the most popular social networking app right now. And part of why is it's it's so popular is it's a seamless user experience. So are you working on websites, apps, um, other, you know, technology that I might not know mm-hmm. about? Yeah, it's definitely uh, a little bit of a um, variety of different technologies. We do website development, we do online stores development, custom web applications, mobile apps. We've been also tapping in more um, fun, innovative technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, Mm -hmm. Alexa voice skills. So I'm really excited about the future of user interface and voice UI, which is your um, voice enabled home assistants like Alexa, Google Home. Uh, That's part of that new uh, domain where the industry is moving and it's just like the capabilities of uh, providing those seamless user interfaces to the customers and uh, engaging um, engaging 
people on a different level building the brand awareness or brand engagement is just um, and, and also actually adding um, uh, improving accessibility uh, for uh, f- for people that you know have those needs is extremely valuable and important. So I'm very uh, passionate about um, you know the, the 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 topic of the future of the UI. Yeah, it, it's great. And you, so you're out of Buffalo, so you're mm-hmm. right down the road from my home base of Rochester. But you help everyone in Western New York, right? Your your talents can ultimately be you can work national, you can work international, right? So you're out of Buffalo, but you work all across the region, I imagine. And, and whether it's a case study, I know you've got a few case studies on your LinkedIn or just, you know, some examples. How do you help the region? You know, I, I saw you worked with the University of Buffalo. I don't know if you want to use them as an example, but give us an example of how what you do with UX UI really helps, you know, businesses grow and, and create such a good user experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'd say the first, uh, w- one of the ways of how we help the businesses, even just by starting to educate them about the <clears throat> importance of investing in the proper UX UI design, um, that's not something that a lot of companies think about as the valuable um, uh, part of the project or the process that they should be investing in, which is can be huge oversight on the whether it's a startup founder and or the company that's building the product or designing the website, because uh, with the UX UI design, that's uh, the the part of the project where you. Uh, you, you, you can validate your assumptions. You can go and talk to the customers uh, or your target users, get their feedback and get some actionable feedback that you can quickly implement and uh, in, in your design prototype and adjust it almost on the fly versus waiting to get the user and customer feedback after the development phase when you spent months, you know, tens of thousands of dollars building something only to find out that you have something that your customers don't want and you have to go back to square one, spend more resources, more time while your competitor is beating you to the market and you're mm. just going to um, get a lot of gray hairs pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely don't want that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, about the case studies, mm-hmm. give us an example because this stuff, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm simple-minded, <laughs> I'm very basic and what you do is on a very sophisticated level so if you can give us maybe a concrete example of mm-hmm. you know a process you went through with a client i think it can really bring to light exactly what you guys do yeah yeah definitely we have um one of the local startups uh, that we worked with called transparency registry it, which is a fintech startup and they've been building this uh, complex uh, blockchain based platform in the debt collection space and they had a very cool idea but uh, it's been taking a very long time for them to implement just because of the overall complexity of the platform so what happened their mvp wasn't ready yet and they've been running out of the runway and they needed to raise more money but they didn't have anything to show to the investors yet. So what we've done, we helped them to create an interactive UX UI prototype that um, pretty much emulated the functionality of the the uh, application, the web application. And for the users that are not, you know, might not be aware, it's, you know, if you click on the prototype, it will act like an actual app. So, you know, you'll, you, you get the screens changing, you click on the button, go back and forth, stuff like that. So they used that interactive prototype and they presented to the investors and were able to raise $1.2 million seed round. Uh, and uh, overall process took them, including us designing the prototype and them going and raising the, you know, the round took them nine months. So uh, the, the ROI on that UX UI prototype was like in thousands of a percent. So um, just... The, the the value you know things like this that the you know founders might not always think but you know uh, also you know while they were waiting for that MVP to be developed they you know use that UX prototype to go and start presenting to the potential customers banks 
you know, other fintech companies in the space. So, um, you know, not only help them to secure the investment, but also help to start selling sooner and just, um, you know, getting the product validated much sooner, getting that customer feedback as well. Um, so, yeah, overall, it's been a like, great, great success with them. Yeah, that, that does sound like a great success. And <laughs> I I hope so. I deal with a lot of very small businesses from everywhere from San Diego, California over here to Rochester. And my goal is to get them all in a position where they need UX, UI design. They need they're at a point where they're scaling massively and they're staying up and you know, up with the times in the technology. I'm wondering, you know. Is there a certain size or scope or kind of business that you can help the most? Like if any of us could, you know, get you the perfect client, does it require like a, a certain size or a certain industry? Who who needs this stuff and how do we know we need it if we, we maybe don't know much about it? Yeah. <laughs> so I would say the... The types of the clients that we uh, found, I would say the most, uh, we were able to provide the most impactful results were um, the startups that were looking to raise either seed found or series A round and um, or businesses that were building, uh, whether it's an internal uh, product or customer facing products and they had a unique design or technology challenge that we helped them to, to solve via our um, UX UI design process. So any, I would say the companies that have complex design technology problems that need to be solved, that's our sweet spot. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that they have technology problems yet. So <laughs> they can call you and ultimately you can give an assessment of what they're doing and recommendations of where to go, right? Definitely. Yeah, that's uh, a part of our process. And that's the, the, the phase one, uh, the discovery and definition where we come in and we do this, the full assessment to help them to help the companies identify, um, you know, just give them the big picture of the where they at, what's working well, what's not working well, and what can they improve and create a roadmap for that design technology, um, you know, improvements for the next year or several months. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So Lena, I always like to keep it a little lighthearted for a second and just talk about the region. Yeah. I personally, I'm born and raised Rochester, New York. Um, my family, actually, I, I have family from Colorado. So I was raised a Denver Bronco fan, but this time of year, especially with the Buffalo Bills Go in Bills. the playoffs, <laughs> I am, yeah. they've always been my number two, but I'm officially a Bills fan now. It's humorous because we're recording this on a Thursday. This isn't going to go live until the Thursday following mm. that AFC championship game. Um, so I guess we're, anyone listening or watching this, it, it's already happened. So my assumption is the Bills are going to win. Um, but we don't have to talk about football. I'm just curious in terms of Buffalo, New York, Western New York. What, what, what do you love to do? Like, what, what do you just like to do for fun when you're not completely, you know, indulging in these complex systems? What do you do just to lay back and have fun in Western New York? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I can talk about it for hours. And be, 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 before I answer your question, just to give uh, take one step back, I'm I'm not originally from Buffalo, New York. I'm originally from Russia, and I moved to Buffalo in 2010. Wow. So that's been over 11 years ago. So Buffalo is home now. And um, the first thing that stood out to me about the people in this area is how passionate they were about their city and the community and just, you know, building it up and improving the the world around them. So and it was such a contagious energy that got me also, you know, sucked in and, uh, you know, got me excited about getting involved with the startup and technology scene here in the area. And then um, I, I mean, Buffalo is just such a, I don't know, like a, it's like a sweet spot uh, to to live in and you know to to work at. Uh, I do enjoy proximity to, you know, to the nature. Right, we have a you know ton of lakes. We have ton of great hiking spots. You know, mountains in the driving distance. 
we're also close to large cities like New York City, Toronto, mm -hmm. um, which we can't visit right now. But <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm counting the days when the border is <laughs> open again. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, the food is great. People are amazing. Uh, I love summers in Buffalo and just like being in a city and uh, being around that energy and people on the street and the music playing and it's just um, yeah I I don't I I love this area and I could not be happy to to live here. Yeah. yeah, we're we're happy that you made it over this way in upstate Western New York. Yeah, and it's still much warmer than Russia, so <laughs> it's still an upgrade from the Russian winter. So I'm definitely happy about that. Yeah, to, to talk about Russia, so do you yeah. have a similar cycle of seasons? You're saying it's real cold down there? Or? Yeah, so the I'm from the European part of Russia. I'm like a okay. one hour flight south of Moscow. So it's we do get a little bit, bit colder winters and the summer is a little bit shorter, but pretty much the same type of weather. Um, sometimes I compare, you know, the weather in my hometown and Buffalo and it's like pretty much spot on. So mm -hmm. it gets a little colder. Like right now, I think they got a um, few feet of snow <laughs> like a couple weeks ago. So, um, but um, yeah, it, it's very similar. I, I call my hometown in Russia is the Buffalo of Russia. It's just how similar they are, like in the size and just like the overall vibe. Yeah, very similar. And and yeah. you're getting snow. It, it's been, I don't know if I should call it magical or nerve wracking, but we're getting no snow this winter thus far, which is weird yeah. for Rochester, Buffalo, Western New York. Um, I. What brought you to the region in the first place? Like, uh, so you've yeah. been in over 10 years now or about, about 10 years. What, what brought you to the region? So the first time when I came here, it was 2008 and I was an exchange student. Okay. So uh, I went back to Russia. I graduated university and then I came back to pursue my, <laughs> pursue my dreams, which just happened to be American dreams. So, and sure. yeah, that's how I ended up here. That's great. That's great. Well, we're we're happy to have you here. I'm happy you like Buffalo. It's not too cold because you're used to it. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, so you work with a lot of you know startups, tech companies, and one thing that's really important to me and anybody who's trying to stay up on the times with the tech industry um, is just efficiency and using technology. To, to better ultimately make your business run efficiently, you know, close more sales, reach mm -hmm. out to more clients, stay up to date on the times. And I have a ton of tools I use, but I'm mm -hmm. curious if you have any tools that are cheap, you know, that mm -hmm. aren't a $100,000 investment, $5,000 investment, any monthly subscriptions or small, you know, purchases in the office, mm -hmm. maybe something that's hundred dollars or less or a hundred dollars a month or less any tools or tactics you use to really help your company run efficiently yeah so that's something that i'm currently working on right now on establishing those better uh flows and automation to sure. uh stay you know it, keep those relationships warm with the you know potential customers existing customers um so what I've been using, I mean, so far I've been using a free version of the HubSpot, which I really liked for um, just setting up the reminders to follow up with the, you know, um, potential customers or just like with a, with anyone in my inbox, keeping track of the projects in the pipeline, um, stuff like that. So, and then let's see, um, hmm, I would say I've been using MailChimp for email of, like the, you know, um, mass email, but right now I'm looking into active campaign and setting up more, um, uh, that automated, uh, flow where I can, you know, add extra logic based on how people interact with the email, whether they opened it or they didn't. So that way I can continue the, the, the people of the customers that I have on the pipeline. I can, can continue keep that, um, connection warm without, you know, me, you know, manually staying on top of it every day. 
I love it. Yeah. Um, MailChimp's obviously a great tool. A lot of us know HubSpot. I, I want to put a highlight on HubSpot um, specifically because I am an investor in HubSpot. Oh. I own plenty of their stock. So go, um, there's HubSpot sells services, but most of their services are free. There's a free CRM. Um, for example, you can build a great signature with your social media links, your photo, all yeah. that stuff on HubSpot totally for free. Wealth of information. HubSpot is a great example of a good company that I, I invest in money in specifically because they give so much value and so much for free that it provides confidence that their paid products have to be really good too. So support HubSpot, literally just because I'm, I'm investing it and I want their stock price to go it, up. It's a great product. I've been using it for, I don't know how many years now. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> what else do you do to stay active and intelligent and kind of up on the times in your role? Is there a mentorship or podcasts or a book or certain things that you do to research and sharpen the saw per se and stay, you know, relevant in a crazy world? Yeah. yeah. The, the question is here, what I don't do. <laughs> sure. Uh, don't, I, yeah. I like what not to do is as well, because I've learned more from my mistakes and then yeah. eventually mirroring someone doing it well than doing it right the first time. So whether it's what you do or what you don't do, um, I, yeah. I love questions like this. So. Well, the, the things that I don't do is um, I started saying no to the <clears throat> the networking or just like networking that's more randomized, that um, connecting with people just for the sake of, you know, connecting. I think just with, with me having a limited time, I became more... Um, careful who I say yes to and like the type of people that I'm, you know, trying to connect. Uh, but in terms of staying on top of, you know, trends and learning and expanding the knowledge, oh my God, um, books, I always, I'm always reading something. I'm always like in the middle of reading multiple books, which is mm -hmm. <laughs> probably a bad habit, but I can't help it. Um, so yeah, reading books, um, just talking to people in the industry, um, having, um, in terms of the mentors, I don't have a one go-to mentor, but rather than, you know, people that I look up to in my network, uh, owners of agencies that maybe, you know, a few years ahead of me who I can, you know, just, uh, send a quick text message or jump on a call and ask like, Hey, I have this, you know, question of the problem. How do you, like, how did you handle it? Did you ever have this problem? So, um, that's extremely valuable. I do, uh, let's see, YouTube. I love watching um, a lot of educational videos on YouTube. I do have uh, every year set aside educational budget, both for myself and our team to purchase any courses, uh, online courses, you know, certification programs that we, you know, that we want to take to continue growing in our roles. Um, and also, um, I actually just joined the uh, Clubhouse app, so I'm very excited. Uh, to, you know, go and listen to all those great uh, conversations and um, see what the latest buzz is. Um, so that's just added that into my toolbox. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not so big on the podcasts, mm -hmm. um, but I do, I, I, I would rather prefer, uh, or I, I'd rather prefer audiobooks. So yeah, podcast is like one of the things that I'm not, um, haven't gotten into i did sign up for noble um it's a new startup where they have this like small uh short well not some of them short and some of them are not audio courses mm. so it's kind of instead of you know watching the video course you just listen to it which is also an interesting format it seems like a lot of the products and services are moving into that audio format so. what, what did you say it was called noble or? no noble yeah Okay. Oh, like, no, like I know the yeah. answer. Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. There, there's a lot of things I related to there. I mean, personally, I'm always reading like two to three books at once. Um, I like that you allocate, you know, you basically expense education for your company because oh, that's yeah. something yeah. that's huge. And a lot of people don't 
understand that it is business expensable, that if you're learning education that's going to help you in your role, it's good to take courses and pay for those courses and have skin in the game and invest in your company by educating yourselves like that. Um, Tell us a little bit more about Clubhouse because I have to admit, I have been very like a sore loser about this. I am an Android user and to my understanding, Clubhouse is only on um, iOS. So I'm just out of the loop and I'm the exact kind of person that would be on Clubhouse the moment someone told me about it, but I don't have the opportunity to be on it. So I'm a little butthurt about that, but let's talk about Clubhouse for anybody who doesn't know what it is. It's it's basically just live conversations. How, how does that work? Yeah. So, um, and so you, you join the app and you have lists of the different clubs um that's the terminology that they use in an app which is a room with the people that have an a discussion it's usually moderated discussion you have uh, several people on the stage that share their knowledge or expertise and then you have a people in the audience that can raise the hand and ask the question or contribute to the discussion and it's a variety of different topics it's not just startup or business oriented they have Everything from, uh, you know, languages, uh, psychology, religion, family, just, mm. you know, variety of different topics that you might be interested in, culture, history, you name it. So, and you can uh, join any club at any time and just listen to the conversation, or you can also be one of the presenters and start mm sharing your knowledge on the topic that you're passionate about. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm just, uh, th- this is my first day on the app, but I already okay, got cool. to listen to a couple of really um, cool uh, discussions. So I think this weekend I'm going to dive in more and just kind of, um, you know, s- see what's happening and, um, yeah, try to get more active on the app. So. I'll follow up with you to learn a little bit more once you've been more active on it. Yeah, for sure. I I, I just came up with a prediction on the spot right now. I, I don't know if there's any merit. And I think that a concept like this already exists, but it could be taken to a whole new level. But Clubhouse, you know, it's a group of people coming together, listening to presenters and interacting um, through audio mostly. You don't have to be on video, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. What if we took that and turned it into like a VR experience, virtual Mm. reality, where you could show up in your avatar and see the speaker on the stage and take a seat in a chair and actually have like a live experience talking to these people, but at the same time have the mask of not being on a Zoom call, ultimately being on a audio call, but in your VR form. I'm sure that concept exists, but I could see that being something that really grows into something huge long term. Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll get there. And uh, um, I've seen the companies doing some cool things with VR, uh, and especially in the <clears throat> in the uh, conference, uh, like a co- conference space. So right mm-hmm. now we can't really, you know, go and travel to the in-person conferences, right? So that's what I, I've seen some companies working on creating that virtual experience where you can kind of like pop in into the virtual booth and, you know, talk to the person, the vendor there and, you know, jump back and go and explore and meet somebody else. So it's, uh, uh, I mean, it's definitely, you know, going in the direction um it might take a little a little bit time but um yeah i mean in five years i'm sure we'll see a huge you know step forward with the technology and evolution of communicate like communication i think this n- not this year. oh my god yes last year okay right. I can, i'm excited i can say last year i'm so glad 2020 is over sure. um last year has been a huge catalyst for uh just the T- technology making this you know huge jump forward and people getting connected via technology and you know despite the fact that we all been been stuck in our homes but in the way people got closer together and those boundaries have kind of like blurred between the communities right 
um, where people would go in person events, like even, you know, Buffalo and Rochester, like people would normally go to, you know, just Buffalo people would go to Buffalo events, Rochester people would go to Rochester events. But now I see so much cross pollination with virtual events where people just, you know, it's so easy to jump on a call and, you know, join the discussion that's happening in the Rochester tech community. So it's, that's the definitely beauty that came out of um, 2020. So, and it's only going to accelerate moving forward. So, yeah. Yeah, it really is a beauty. Um, I'm happy that you're seeing some positives in 2020 because I, always I think about, side. you know, the, yeah, exactly. Look at the bright side. And they say, you know, the common term, the cliche is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And there's something to be said that at a certain age is you're learning slower. Maybe it's not as accelerated from when you're a kid, but I have never seen so many people so open-minded to utilizing technologies in a virtual system that oh, I, I don't, I'm the first one to admit, I, I hate being on my phone, like video chatting people never got into Snapchat. I don't really like being on camera, but it's a reality of life these days and people are accepting it and utilizing it to where if your time's valuable and you're very busy, it's sometimes nice that you can hop on a Zoom call without having to get in the car, get in a plane and travel here, oh, there, and yeah. there. So um, the old dogs can learn new tricks is is my takeaway from that. And um I want to move into the rapid fire round, just simple, yeah. either or, or you can fill in the blank. I like to mm -hmm. mention that these days, either or questions or fill in the blank just mm -hmm. to get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Um, coffee or tea? Tea. <laughs> what about beer or wine? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Cats or dogs? Cats. Um, do you have a favorite social media platform to use? Oh God, neither of them. I'm just like, I've been trying to stay away from social media unless it's required by, you know, some work stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. So how do people get in touch with you? Do you prefer they email you, your website? How do we, you know, get in touch and stay, you know? Yeah. I mean, website, uh, forcoda.com or email hello at forcoda.com. Uh, the best way to reach, uh, I mean, I've been kind of with some of the clients I've been switching to, um, text messages just for the ease of the communication. So, uh, Slack, I mean, that's, I'm definitely on Slack. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm not going to ask you the question, Android or iOS. I think I know <laughs> the answer to that. Um, I was thinking we wouldn't address it, but we might as well. Tell us about your, your boyfriend. <laughs> my, my, my slavery. <laughs> Adam Levine. <laughs> yes. Yes. He, he, he just doesn't know about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lena Levine and Adam Levine. He doesn't know about it yet though. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't, well, don't, well, the surprise. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't. Maybe if I see him on Clubhouse eventually when it becomes available for Android and he's on there imparting yeah. knowledge, I'll mention something. But that's yeah, t t tell him to call me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, your phone number is on forcoda.com, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So he knows and potential clients know as well that they can call your team there. And no it, it's been fun chatting with you. Um, obviously, we covered a ton of ground. It, I like to keep it simple. I'm simple minded. But, you know, there's a lot of things I probably would have asked you if I had mm -hmm. known more about you or known more about the industry. Mm -hmm. Is there any tips or tricks, any predictions or just anything that mm -hmm. I would have asked you if I knew a little bit about you and your business? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I usually, I mean, I do have a lot of advice for startup founders and that's, um, you know, the, the, the startup founders that I've been meeting over the years that um, just got, got burned by the, you know, either hiring their own people or just, you know, just doing it themselves. And, 
<laughs> then again, you know, w- w- wasting time and their own energy and then just getting frustrated or getting stuck. So it's right. uh, just wanted to remind that, hey, it's, you know, it's good to go and ask for help. And it's worth sometimes to, you know, spend extra money up front. It will be worth it uh, when you work in an idea, you know, on the project, on the startup, MVP. So, <clears throat> but it will save you a lot of headache, times and resources down the road. So don't feel like you have to do it alone. Uh, definitely reach out for help. Um, you know, reach out to, if you don't have any, you know, people in your network, Reach out to people, um, you know, maybe find some meetup on the meetup page, join the startup slacks, both, you know, Rochester and Buffalo, and uh, just, re- or even people on the LinkedIn, you'll be surprised how open uh, people are to jump on the call and offer the advice. Uh, because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we all been there, you know, in the square one where we didn't know anything. And then just over the time by trial and error and or getting some good advice from our, you know, friends and colleagues, we were able to grow. So those people are always, you know, excited to see, uh, you know, others just kind of starting out and going through the same journey because they remind them of themselves. So you'll be surprised how open people are to, connect and just you know to chat and uh, again that's one of the reasons why i love this you know i love western new york it's just like how kind and uh, you know passionate people are about what they do and you know the community around them so um yeah i just wanted to emphasize that um definitely you know get out of your comfort zone get connect with some great people um in you know in, in your city or actually these days all over the world anywhere, that's right? actually yes yes welcome to the future can connect to <laughs> anyone anywhere so yes yeah i love it get out of your comfort zone don't be afraid yeah. to connect and you're totally right i mean we touched on paying for education it is a business you know expense so investing in your business with education with mentorship but at a you know a simpler level any of us can pick up a book can pick up a uh, audio, listen to a podcast, can jump on Clubhouse, can send an email, can reach out on LinkedIn, yeah. and people are happy to to connect with people that have passion and really are trying to scale up and grow. I mean, it's I know personally if I see someone and they're excited about what they do, I don't really care who they are. I want to know more about them and see if I can help them. And a lot of times they can help me as well. So yeah. I I really align with what you said there. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you can learn, you know, something from the person, you know, that's even just starting out by having that conversation, they might make you think of something that you, you know, didn't think about before, just like give you like this, like fresh perspective. So it's definitely, uh, um, you know, valuable for both parties. So yeah, I love it. So if anyone's thought about reaching out to me, do it. If you've thought about reaching out to Adam Levine's girlfriend, she's right here. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I had fun with you. I appreciate you coming on the show. Awesome. Yeah, this was great. Thank you, Ben. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this, rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.